So, my name is Mari Takenuchi. Uh, I'm a Japanese freelance journalist and I'm a single mother with a four-year-old boy. Uh, today, uh, I would like to talk about what is going on uh, in Japan, especially in Fukushima, uh, focusing on children's health hazards. And uh, uh, first of all, maybe my name, Mari Takenuchi, is quite hard to remember. Uh, but please remember the title of my blog, Save Kids Japan. In this blog, I wrote everything I, want, I wanted to tell you today. So, after watching this video, please check out my blog. Uh, right now, in Japan, amazing thing is going on. The government of Japan is try, trying to return uh, the Fukushima residents back to the contaminated area. Okay, this is quite a recent, re recent news and uh, in February 2014 uh, Japan ethos went into full swing. Uh, let me tell you what is going on. Reconstruction Agency um, announced radiation risk communication package toward residents. Return of Fukushima. Okay, so uh, uh, so as I said, you know, this agency, along with ten other government agencies, they are trying to return the residents back to Fukushima. And additional 50 billion yen, approximately 500 million dollars, and 100 billion yen, approximately 1 billion uh, US dollars were already allocated for lifting evacuation zones and uh, also reinforcement of small number based risk communication based on Belarus ethos is going to be started. Let me tell you about ethos later on. And basic information on radiation risk by 11 related agencies citing ANSCARE, uh, this is a scientific committee uh, in the UN on radiation protection, uh, ANSCARE evaluation, no, pros no prospect to see any increase of health impacts among residents and most workers in the future. Uh, actually, I uh, visited ANSCARE uh, in June 2013 telling them uh, about the uh, already emerged health hazards in Fukushima. And I gave them a letter of 50 or 60 pages to them as well, but they um, quite sadly, they totally ignore uh, my uh, report. I also um, told my followers on my Twitter to, uh, to send letters to the United Nations, especially to Unscare. And I think dozens of people, or maybe hundreds, uh, have sent out the, uh, the emails telling the UN uh, what is going on uh, in Japan, in East Japan, especially in Fukushima. Uh, but it uh, seems like they totally ignore the uh, health hazards, which is actually happening in Japan. That is quite sad. And on February 19th, 2014, memorandum, memorandum co was concluded between President of Fukushima Medical University and Mr. Jack Rochelle, ICRP Vice Chairman. Okay. Fukushima Medical University is the uh, university where uh, they conduct the uh, thyroid examination on all the Fukushima children. And let me tell you about the issue later. And also, Mr. Jack Rochelle. He is an ICLP vice chairman, and at the same time, he is the director of uh, CEPN, which had conducted Belarus ethos. I'll tell you in later pages. Okay, uh, by the way, uh, let me tell you why I am on this video, because I am now currently accused for criminal contempt. And I was really uh, astounded when I heard this news from uh, Fukushima police. I one, one day I got a phone call, uh, that was in the end of January. I was told that uh, Ms. 
Ryoko Ando. Uh, uh, she is a director of Fukushima Ethos. Uh, she accused me, uh, she filed an accusation uh, to the Fukushima police uh, against me for the following one single tweet, tweet. And let me read the tweet itself. Okay, this is my account, Mari Takenoji, uh, at Mark Mari's contact. Uh, let me read it to you. Common points of the two criminals of the century. Yasuhiro Nakasone, who introduced nuclear power to Japan. I've never thought that Japan 2011 could be so worn out. And Yoko Ando, government side citizen activist, who leads, who leads ethos that has been conducting human experiments. What a world are we seeing 67 years after the war on the day of Nagasaki? Uh, let me explain briefly. Uh, Yasuhiro Nagasone uh, is the uh, politician who introduced nuclear budget for the first time in Japan. And uh, it was in 1954 and, and right after the bikini uh, nuclear test incident. There were um, dozens of fishermen who got exposed to radiation because of the U.S. nuclear testing. And while the uh, people's campaign against nuke was mounting, uh, Mr. Nakasone introduced the nuclear power budget and uh, under the uh, strategy such as poison could conquer another poison. Uh, this, was, this strategy was created by a uh, uh, media, media person uh, who was working for Yomiuri newspaper and uh, Nippon TV and uh, that was, this strategy was also actually consulted with a CIA agent and this is a historical fact and uh, so that was Mr. Nakatsune but uh, I was really surprised when I heard about his interview article after the Fukushima nuclear accident uh, he said this thing I thought he felt more responsible on his own deeds he was the very person who introduced nuclear power to Japan and there are so many people suffering now in East Japan. And how could he, you know, he just pretend that he has nothing to do with this nuclear accident. And he was saying this lie. And um, I was like, I felt strong resentment against this. And also the same resentment I felt was toward Ms. Ryoko Ando, who is Ito's Japan. Uh, east of Fukushima, and uh, she's telling the Fukushima residents that uh, let's, you know, get encouraged and uh, keep living here by measuring radiation, uh, carrying dosimeters, and doing whole body counter or whatever, and uh, let's find your own sense of security or something. But um, the best way, the best solution after nuclear accident is to evacuate. Especially the kids should be evacuated because they are much more vulnerable to radiation and they have no choice than the, the adults, responsible adults, should encourage children and pregnant women to get out of the contaminated area. But he, she is leading such a group and at the same time on the day of Nagasaki she was saying this kind of thing. And, uh, I thought there was some common points between Mr. Nakasone and Ms. Ryoko Ando. Oh, by the way, as you know, Mr. Nakasone was a former prime minister in Japan. And uh, this is a different story, but Mr. Nakasone once built a comfort station uh, when he was, he was in the Navy during the war. And, uh, uh, okay, that was another story, but I just wanted to add. Uh, because I was also working on comfort women issue uh, some years ago. Well, anyway, so uh, let me tell you more about Ethos. Actually, Ethos was first conducted in Belarus from 1996 to 2001. It was led by Mr. Jack Rochelle, a French economist, and uh, as I said, he is now a vice chairman of ICLP. 
And he even used to work at CEA, uh, Atomic Energy Commission in France. And he's also a director of CEPM, which is Ethos Project, which led Ethos Project. And uh, this CEPM is supposed to be an NGO, but uh, it is actually funded by French nuclear lobbies, such as CEA, EDF, IRSN, and Kojima, now Aleva. And uh, the most important thing is, after the ESOS project, and they, they say that the ESOS project finished quite successfully, but actually uh, in, the, in the final meeting, um, the final speaker of the meeting, uh, she was a pediatrician, local pediatrician, and she said uh, the number of kids uh, who were seriously ill and hosp hospitalized went up 10 times after Ito's project. This is the most important thing. Children's health must be protected most, but Ito's project was eyeing on uh, some economical aspect, uh, <clears throat> uh, cultural aspect, social aspect, and blah blah blah, and he was, they were ignoring the most important factor, children's health. And now Fukushima ethos started since uh, 2011 after the nuclear accident. And the uh, director is, as I said many times, uh, Ms. Ryoko Ando. She's the accuser of my case right now. And, uh, and Jack Rochelle, the same person, was invited to Japan. And actually, he was a speaker at cabinet office Japanese government cabinet office in in November 2011 and prior to that he was even invited to Hiroshima uh, speaking about ethos in 2000 but uh, according to Ms. Ando she said um, she came up with the idea ethos and she came up with the na even the name ethos by herself and then afterwards she encountered Mr. Jack Ro Rochelle. And I thought this story sounded quite unnatural. And I, I, I don't know the truth about this, but anyway, I, I became quite skeptical after listening to her story. I mean, reading her story on some blog. Uh, please let me uh, tell you why I think ethos is so problematic. Because ethos is relying on uh, ICLP, and actually I have the translation of ICLP, publication 111, ethos is based on this scientific knowledge. But uh, uh, let me tell you frankly, um, I, I believe ICLP is a fraud. It is not telling the truth regarding radiation protection. And it is not only me, there are many people uh, in the world who studied about radiation and who opposes to the theory of ICLP. Let me give you some examples. Uh, actually, I wrote about the uh, ICLP uh, in the foreign blog, Save Kids Japan, titled Five Reasons Why ICLP is Wrong. And if you look at this page, you can see this video. Actually, uh, this video was taken by Dr. Chris Busby, uh, the leader of ECRR, uh, which is uh, critical against ICLP. And he once interviewed Dr. Jack Valentine, the former uh, scientific secretary, uh, which means a top of ICLP, for 20 years. And after he got retired, he, uh, he, he said the following thing. This is not the exact wording, but uh, the meaning wise, it is the same. Uh, let me read. ICLP may have underestimated the internal radiation effect by 100 times. I think this is a very big scandal. Uh, ICLP is considered to be the world standard for radiation protection, but the former leader of ICLP confessed 
that ICRP's estimation of the internal radiation effect was 100 times lower than real. And, uh, but uh, I was quite surprised that uh, there, there were some uh, ICLP-related meetings in Japan after the Fukushima accident, and I found the following word in 2012. ICLP considers that for a given radiation dose, the same radiation risk should be expected whether radiation is from outside or inside the body. I think this is really a scientific fraud. Um, even an elementary school kid would understand if a poison is outside of their body or inside of their body, which would have more impact. Of course, if you take the poison inside, it will have more impact. But ICLP totally ignores this fact. Okay, um, so this is a scientist I, scientist and doctor I respect most, Dr. Yuli Bantrzejewski. And uh, you can see him in the film call, called Controversies Nuclears by Vladimir Chotokov. And, uh, also, you can uh, type in his name, and then uh, you can find his thesis uh, on the internet. Uh, for example, Bandazevsky 2003, Swiss Weekly something, or Bandazevsky 2009. Uh, you can find some, some of his thesis. And also, uh, yeah, here, here, here. I just think it out. Uh, this is a Swiss Medical Weekly by Dr. Yuri Bandajewski. Chronic Assessing 137 Incorporation in Children's Organs. This is quite important because children uh, get higher concentration of cesium uh, in, their, in their organs compared to adults. According to him, uh, two or three times higher. He's a pathologist as well, so um, this is quite an important finding in, in his study. And also, oh, there are both English and Japanese version. This is a proceeding of 2009 ECRR conference, uh, Lesbos, Greece. And uh, Dr. Bandajewski uh, reported his finding in here as well. So. Uh, please check out his papers on the internet later on. And uh, the most important finding of his study is that uh, 10 becquerel per kilogram of uh, cesium incorporation in the body starts causing heart abnormality. This is quite a very important finding and uh, to deny his finding Somebody has to do the same experiment, otherwise nobody can deny it. And he's the only one who, who conducted the, uh, such a study. And uh, yeah, we really have to pay special attention to this finding. And uh, he also continued, ICLP standard of 1 millisievert equals 30,000 becquerel per body is not safe. I really think so. I, don't know how they convert one millisievert to becquerel like this number and uh, as I said this is an internal dose thing and this is quite a scientific fraud once again okay so now the Tokyo University Japan's top university uh, is conducting a whole body counter study and this is led by Professor Hayano and Dr. Tsubokura and other people. And actually I've been uh, sort of arguing with Professor Hayano right now on the internet. Uh, uh, sorry, but they are only in Japanese, so maybe later on I will uh, do some translation and what, what is going on. But uh, anyway, uh, Professor Hayano is saying that most of Fukushima residents are under uh, one millisievert 
so they are safe after conducting this study but as I said ICRP standard is 1 millisievert equals 30,000 becquerel per body which means if that person is 60 kilogram adult 500 becquerel per kilogram please remember low level radi radioactive waste level is 100 becquerel per kilogram so it's already five times how can a person live a healthy life if the person's body is five times as much as radioactive waste it is really nonsense and by the way 500 becquerel per kilogram is the current Japanese food standard this is scary as well and uh, actually I, um, I met uh, his colleague Dr. Tsubokura in Okinawa in 2011 when he visited Okinawa as a lecturer and uh, I, he, he, was, he was emphasizing how safe uh, it is in Fukushima and uh, so I, uh, uh, during the question and answer session I asked him whether he read Dr. Bantasjewski's paper and surprisingly he said yes and he knew about the theory 10 becquerel per kilogram uh, is causing heart abnormality after Chernobyl and he, um, he can confess that oh what can I do uh, in Fukushima I feel um, I feel really uh, worried and troubled such kind of things but actually after that he um, he wrote this uh, whole body counter thesis uh, which is spread worldwide and uh, in the conclusion of the thesis Fukushima people are safe so um, he's having this double standard thing and I want to ask him why so um, this once again this uh, Mr. Jack Rochelle uh, ICLP vice uh, chairman and also the leader of ethos project in Belarus uh, he wrote a letter to Fukushima ethos uh, Ms. Ryoko Ando and uh, he said such kind of thing 20 millisievert per year is a good news but this is contrary to ICLP recommendation 1990 uh, according to 1990 the uh, public uh, the population in the public uh, should be exposed to uh, uh, less than one millisievert per year. So why is it the good news? And uh, also he said this thing in the local Fukushima TV uh, he said mothers wouldn't understand science 20 becquerel per kilogram food is okay but I think Mr. Jack Rochelle doesn't understand science uh, for example uh, this one is the uh, Japanese um, food standard before and after the accident actually before is the actual figures after the measurement of the food uh, and uh, the bottom line is the uh, uh, average food contamination uh, that was 0 0.07 becquerel per kilogram before the accident and after the food standard became uh, up to 100 becquerel, it's okay. Most of the food is 100 becquerel. How can a child take it? Even adults, this is too too risky. And especially for children, this is uh, this is nonsense, I think. And also in this uh, ICRP uh, 111, uh, there is a graph like this. Like if you um, eat 10 becquerel per day how much cesium will be incorporated into the one's body this is the line and uh, it will be more than 1400 becquerel and this 1400 becquerel per body means even for 70 kilo kilogram adult it will be 20 becquerel per kilogram this is a dangerous level for heart anomaly so I really hope Mr. Jack Rochelle would take a look at this video 
and rethink about what he's saying, and he should study science. He should study Dr. Bantashevsky's paper, I really believe. And uh, this is the most important thing um, in Fukushima, what's going on. Actually, Fukushima kids are at risk. Uh, there are 75 thyroid and uh, thyroid cancer and suspected cases, and some with even lymph nodes metastasis. Uh, I heard about this from a Fukushima mother. Uh, her, well, her friends, who is also a Fukushima mother, ha, uh, had a child. Uh, she, she found her child uh, having this thyroid cancer quite suddenly. And uh, they went to the Fukushima Medical University to have the surgery. And the, then the, on the same day, another child was waiting for the surgery. And uh, both of them were found to have metastasis in their lymph nodes. That is really shocking. And uh, I made a phone call to Fukushima Medical University. And uh, I asked them, uh, aren't you going to uh, announce the, uh, this metastasis problem? And then they said, oh, uh, me cancer metastasis problem is a personal information, private information. So we cannot announce it publicly. And I was really uh, confused because Fukushima Medical University is saying that the uh, uh, thyroid cancer is curable and uh, after the operation uh, people can live long or whatever but if there is a metastasis the thing is totally different okay so this is the uh, uh, very important paper which was released after 2011 it was approved uh, in on April 26, 2011, and uh, it was edited by Janet Rowley, University of Chicago. And uh, the title is Gain of Chromosome Band 7Q11 in Papillary Thyroid Carcinomas of, of Young Patient is Associated with Exposed to Low Dose Radiation. This is so important because uh, those who got thyroid cancer from radiation exposure had uh, alternation of this 7Q11 uh, gene band broken into three pieces. Usually it gets broken into two pieces. It's, it gets separated into two pieces. But 40% uh, of the kids who got exposed to radiation and had thyroid thyroid cancer got this uh, al uh, alternation of the genes. But for those who have not been exposed to radiation and the thyroid cancer, there was none. Such kind of phenomena was found none among those who didn't get exposed to radiation. So this is quite a very clear index whether the thyroid cancer was caused by radiation or not. And I asked the Fukushima Medical University, why don't you conduct this gene test? And don't you have any plan? And they said, no, we are not going to do that. And I asked the same question to uh, some famous thyroid uh, hospitals in Japan, and the answer was the same. I really don't understand. Why don't they try to find out the cause of thyroid cancer? And if the cause is found, like, there were some children who got this uh, 7Q99 uh, gene band uh, we separated into three pieces. Then we can tell that, oh, this thyroid cancer was caused by radiation. Then we have to relocate the kids out of Fukushima. But the government and the doctors um, are not, do not have any intention to find out this cause and uh, um, I, I really don't understand w what they are aiming at. And not only thyroid cancer, leukemia is emerging in Fukushima right now. And uh, quite strangely, government of Japan stopped taking statistics 
of leukemia after the nuclear accident. Before the nuclear accident, they were taking the statistics, but only after the accident, they stopped statistics of uh, leukemia in Fukushima and in south of Miyagi. And uh, this another thing is quite shocking to me. Uh, one ethos uh, supporting scholar, his name is Mr. Nobuhiko Ban, he's a professor of Tokyo uh, Health Medical University. Um, he was actually an expert of leukemia development. He uh, once conducted an animal experiment using mouse and uh, he found out that the uh, only one or two years after exposure to radiation, aging of hematopoietic stem cell and uh, alternation of SFPI1 gene occur, uh, which causes leukemia only one or two years after the exposure. This is such a, a very important finding and I really don't understand why uh, he keeps, he still keeps saying that it is safe to live in Fukushima even though um, leukemia children started to be found in Fukushima and he knows such kind of mechanism in gene level and why can he let the Fukushima children be exposed to radiation I really don't understand and even in Ibaragi prefecture uh, heart anomaly rate is rising according to the contamination uh, I found this chart in a, uh, uh, in a blog uh, made by uh, an Ibaragi NGO uh, citizens group person and uh, Ibaragi is just south of Fukushima and uh, this prefecture conducts uh, uh, electric cardiogram uh, test for junior high school kids and uh, that's how they came up with this data but anyway I'm really really worried about Fukushima children I really want the Fukushima children be evacuated as soon as possible And, uh, yeah, finally, uh, please check out my blog, Save Kids Japan. There, I started a petition campaign, and uh, I uh, created the English peti petition campaign. Actually, my American friend uh, created a petition campaign in English first, and uh, it is called uh, Abbas Petition. And, uh, uh, mm. This is a URL, uh, bit.ly slash Marie Takenouchi. And if you cannot remember this URL, please type in Save Kids Japan and uh, you can find the, uh, the petition. Uh, they, are, they are in my blog pages. And uh, yeah, finally, let me tell you uh, something. Okay, finally let me tell you something. Uh, this is a report published by United Nations Office for the Coordination of Humanitarian Affairs, OCHA. Uh, the title is Chernobyl. A continuing catastrophe was published in 2000 and I was really surprised to find uh, the word by Mr. Kofi Annan, the former Secretary General of the United Nations. He says as follows, three million children require physical treatment. Three million children require physical treatment after Chernobyl accident. We cannot find 
this kind of figure anywhere in IAEA or ANSCII reports. And why aren't they telling the truth? I was really shocked to hear to find this report. In the United States, in the United Nations, there are there is some pressure to hide the truth of Chernobyl and Fukushima, the real health hazards of Chernobyl and Fukushima. And uh, yeah, people in the world should wake up to see this fact and we should stand up to raise our voice to save children's lives in Chernobyl and in Fukushima. Um, I'm a freelance journalist, but before that I am a mother and I really can't tolerate this fact what is going on in Chernobyl and in Fukushima and wherever. We really have to give helping hands to the people living in contaminated areas. Thank you very much.